growing up, I was a bright child. She's a gifted child, there's a difference. Good morning everybody. So today I had a meeting with Ellie's teacher, not just her regular teacher, with her spark teacher. So this is the teacher who is gonna teach Ellie's gifted class. I'm so excited. Y'all don't like. Okay, so having a kid who is identified as gifted is difficult in a lot of senses but really really cool in other senses like they're so smart and so like they're on a different level than you expect a six-year-old or a five-year-old to be and like for example ellie can talk circles around me um it does not work very well for me because i expect her to be good and listen and do what you're told and but then like, for example, I'll give you an example. Whenever Ellie was three, when Ellie was th I had to check my, I think it was whenever she was three. Whenever Ellie was three years old, she was jumping on the couch. And I said, I walked in the living room and I said, Ellie, do not jump on the couch. She said, okay, mommy. Fine. Sat down. Came back in, because I was cooking. Came back in. She was jumping off of the couch. And I said, Ellie, do not jump on the couch. She said, I'm not. I'm jumping off of the couch. Don't jump off of the couch. Okay, mommy, to walk out. Come back in. She had pulled a chair up and was jumping from the chair to the couch. I said, Ellie, don't jump on the couch. I'm not, I'm jumping onto the couch. So she kept twisting these little bitty words into what she was allowed to do. She kept twisting what I was telling her and it's like, you gotta stop. <laughs> okay, I cannot. I cannot quantify every single time I tell you something. I cannot explain it down to a T exactly what I'm telling you. You really have to understand the essence of what I'm trying to say because I am not going to be able to lawyer speak my way through your childhood. Like, I got very frustrated. And then, oh, this was even before that. This was her second birthday. Her second birthday. We were trying to uh, potty train her and she was doing really good unless she was playing. Like she just wanted to keep playing. And so we came up with the rule that if she was playing while she was pot, like if she needed to go to the bathroom and had an accident while she was playing with something, she would lose that toy. Like that was the punishment for not listening to her body and not getting up and going to the bathroom and not be doing the responsible thing. She would lose that toy. Now, when she was two, she understood this concept. So I'm, I was not being mean, I was not being rude. At two years old, my daughter understood this concept and she got it. So much so that she manipulated it. And for her second birthday, she needed to go to the, she was playing with her toys while everybody was getting dressed. She was playing with her toys. She needed to go to the bathroom. She got up, walked over to her nanny, TT'd in her pants, and then walked back over and played with her toys. I can't take her nanny away from her, but I also can't take that toy away from her because she wasn't technically playing with it whenever she had an accident. And she made sure to explain that to me. So that is what I mean. She talks circles around me and anytime I make a rule, she twists it. And so <sighs> I can admire what she's doing. I can acknowledge that it's pretty cool that a kid can do that. As a mom, I get really frustrated with it. And so, um, but meeting with her gifted teacher today, I almost started crying. I, I teared up a little bit because she gave me a paper of everything to look for in a gifted kid and versus a bright kid because there's difference. Like, like growing up, I was a bright child. That's what they always said. I was a bright child. It means that I learned really quickly. I did good on tests. I'd listened in class. Like I was just a really good student. I know how to pay attention. Like, I was just, I was a bright student. She's a gifted child. There's a difference. And so she gave me this list. I'm going to put the picture up of the list. So she gave me this list and everything on the gifted side is Ellie. And some of them are the things that frustrate me so much. Like, how she's overly observant. And, like, she can emulate people. She can, like, 
she watches people so closely. She told me one time how I eat a french fry. And I'm like, why do you know that? And she's like, well, I, I just saw, I watched you eat a french fry and this is how you eat it. I don't know why you shove it in your mouth at the end, but that's how you eat a french fry. And I'm like, Ellie! <laughs> Ellie. So, anyway. What I, I'm, sometimes I, sometimes I get mad because we expect the kids to be polite and we expect them to be, which they should be and she should be and she cannot just rest on, oh I'm gifted, I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to be a certain way. No, you still, you still need to be polite and you still need to be respectful. But I also need to be conscious of the fact that her brain is working differently than I am expecting it to. And so that is what I got out of that meeting with her, with her teacher. On top of the fact that I got to figure out, I learned what she is going to be learning. And Ellie, my six-year-old daughter, is going to be reading novels and learning coding, which is pretty cool. And I'm really excited about it. So I cannot wait for her to start. She starts Spark next week and I'm so so excited that I'm like I'm like buzzing I can't wait for her to get off of school so I can go talk to her about it uh, anyway so she I thought it was just like for an hour once a week no they pull them out for a whole day they get to go in the spark classroom and just learn all these high-level learning things and get pushed past what they're normally pushed past because the problem with it the reason why I signed her up to be tested, because a lot of people said not to, she was showing, showing signs, she was showing signs, that was hard to say, she was showing signs of um, not caring about school anymore. And she loved school, trying to act like the kids who needed more help from the teacher. Because as a really smart kid, she doesn't need help from the teacher. Like, you tell her something a half a time, you don't even have to tell her a whole time, a half a time, or just show her a worksheet and she's gonna figure it out and she does it. And if she has a question, she'll ask you a question. I have snot all over my shirt. We just went grocery shopping and Finn has a horrible runny nose. Anyway, it's all up here too. <laughs> Gross. But then she'd see some of the other kids who needed more help get attention from the teacher and get praise from the teacher. And so she was starting to want to not know things and so she came home not knowing how to write a four and forgetting what goes at the end of a sentence and where she knows these things like she knows she knew how to write her name in cursive when she was four like she knows she taught herself how to write her name in cursive when she was four she's teaching she taught herself to write in cursive at five like completely in cursive and read in cursive at five she taught herself that but at school, she was acting like she didn't know anything. I mean, not anything. She was acting like she was having trouble in school to, I think, to get attention. And that's not okay with me. And she was also very bored. She would never say that because she didn't want to ever say she was bored. But she would, I would notice that she was being, that she was showing signs of being bored. For example, all of her worksheets, she would have every answer done. Perfectly, totally correct, good handwriting, perfect. Flip it over and it is covered in doodles. I mean, the whole paper just covered in doodles or covered in writing or covered in just whatever she felt like doing that day. Meaning that while the rest of the class is working on this one thing, she finishes it in a very small amount of time and spends the rest of the time just getting her energy out by doodling on her paper. I just, I really, really wanted her in Spark because I really, really want her to be challenged and I want her to learn those skills that Spark can teach her, like pushing herself and um, learning higher level, like mastering higher level academic skills. Researching, computer work, coding, um, they're going to be reading novels, they're going to go on field trips, they're going to all kinds of really cool stuff and so I'm really super excited and I cannot wait to tell her so I'm just really excited